In this video, I'm going to show an example of enzyme function looking at acetylcholinesterase. Um, the enzyme that catalyzes acetylcholine uh, reaction into choline. So first, uh, let's look at the um, reaction without the intermediate. So as you can see, we have acetylcholine on the left and the serine residue that it would bind to in its enzyme on the right. Um, and then we have a transition state in the middle that's missing, and then it would create a new choline um, molecule at the end. So the reactant is on the left, and the choline product is on the right. The intermediate stage is this enzyme-bound intermediate here, but this is hard to take an image of, usually because it's such a short-lived state. And so in order to take a picture or to create a X-ray crystallography image, of what um, it looks like when the reaction is occurring, scientists have devised a um, enzyme-bound intermediate um, that is not reactive. And this is called the transition state analog. So it's a really stable molecule that sits in the active site of the enzyme and it holds the place of the active site open so that we can actually take a crystallography image of what it looks like when the enzyme is actually doing its work. So we call it a transition state analog. It's basically an inhibitor. It sits right in the active site. It blocks the active site from changing um, and it holds the shape of what the active site would look like uh, when um, acetylcholine was bound to the active site right before choline. Here's the whole sequence of the enzyme. Um, we can see secondary structures in red squiggles and yellow um, arrows, just like we see in pymol. We can see the primary sequence in one letter code, at least in this example, and we can also see important um, uh, trans important residue names, um, or at least residues where binding sites and um, uh, enzyme ac activity actually happens. And those are these really tiny uh, yellow or uh, green circles, where it says binding site for residue um, at the bottom. You can see the sort of the legend at the bottom that shows that. So I want to know um, what each one of the name of those um, amino acids are at those sites. Or better yet, I can actually um, use the, let me just open my file here. I can use the name of the residues um, or their number to find them in the enzyme. So here's acetylcholinesterase with the transition state analog in the middle. That's uh, shown in spheres. The rest of the enzyme is shown in cartoon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, that chart. Um, and I'm going to find out which of the amino acids bind with the transition state analog. Um, here's another example of, of what that would look like. So these are sort of some of the amino acids that are going to make IMFs with the transition state analog to hold it in place um, at the binding site so that the enzyme um, function, the active site function, can actually get done. So I'm going to need some of these numbers. Um, and just like uh, we did in previous primal sessions, what I want to do is I want to um, take down these numbers, or have these numbers available, or these names of these amino acids available, so that I can create a subset, or a selected subset, of just the amino acids that are active, uh, that are in the active site or in the binding site. So that's the information that I'm going to need, or I can get out of um, this particular diagram. We see some hydrogen bonding, we see some one dispersion forces. Um, so I'll take the residue names, um, or residue numbers I should say, so I'm going to select 
binding site for uh, amino acids. And I'm going to, instead of residue names, I'm going to use residue numbers. So R-E-S-I in this case. And I'm going to add in all of the numbers of um, potential binding site amino acids. Once I have the amino acids selected, I hit enter, and it creates a selection of amino acids. I'm going to show these as dots, so you can sort of at least see the outline of them. And I'm also going to label them by their residue name. All of these are a potential amino acids uh, involved in the active site. They're definitely all involved in at least binding the transition state analog in some way. We can sort of move our screen around to see that they all surround or touch the analog, the transition state analog inhibitor in some way. I'm going to make sure that my amino acid sequences are shown here so that if I um, one, I can actually go and see exactly where each of these is in the primary sequence. So they're not next to each other. Um, some of them are, some of them aren't in the primary sequence. Um, um, they're either found in groups or they're single. Uh, but in the folding of the protein, they all come together to surround the substrate um, at the active or the binding site where the substrate would bind. So some of these are going to make London dispersion forces with the substrate. Some may make hydrogen bonds uh, with the substrate. <clears throat> and at least one of them is going to be involved in making a covalent bond with the substrate. Essentially what we can do here is we can get a picture of the uh, substrate mimic inside the active site. Of our, of our enzyme. So I'll hide everything and then um, here's the picture that I actually took with all of the labels of all of the binding site um, molecule or amino acids. I'm going to select now just those that are involved in the binding in the actual active site. There's three amino acids um, that are really closely linked to the substrate. I'm going to uh, identify them by residue numbers, or 199, 200, and uh, 440. So that's a blue, a ser, and a hiss. Um, and then I'm going to also, I'm going to show those as lines, um, or sticks, I should say. And the reason I show those as sticks is I want us to be able to see exactly which ones touch our substrate. So we're going to have to spin around a little bit. We may have to slice through the molecule once or twice to see how these are actively holding our substrate. And I should see at least one of them, and it looks like it's this one right here, that physically touches or makes a covalent bond with the substrate. So let's click on this one. Which um, amino acid is this? If we go up, we can read that this is serine, the 200th amino acid in the chain. Is the, yep, you can see it right here. That is the amino acid that actually makes a covalent bond uh, with, in this image, the inhibitor, but what would, what would actually be the substrate. Um, the other two molecules, or amino acids, um, are going to be sort of making a hydrogen bond, so they're not actually touching, but they are having some sort of hydrogen bond interaction, uh, which holds the substrate or the inhibitor in place. Um, so again, I can take another image here um, to actually see the active site. I'm actually going to show you really quick the overall structural or surface um, components of the molecule, and you can see this hole down here is the active site. That's where the substrate would go in. I'm going to show my um, 
uh, amino acids it sticks again so you can see them sort of peeking through that hole where the substrate would bind. Um, yeah, you can sort of see that the active site is deep within the center of this overall enzyme. And this is a picture of the actual um, triad that serine, glutamine, and histamine that do the um, actual binding. And remember, it's serine is the one that does the, the physical um, covalent bonding with its uh, substrate.